Program Coordinator for Nigeria's Natural Resource Charter, Tengi George Ikoli, in a chart with Business uh, News, uh, says the country needs streams of revenue to fund its expenditures. Take a listen. Petroleum is the mainstay of the Nigerian economy. There are other natural resources as well, like, for instance, solid minerals, which has also been the focus of a lot of stakeholders, and there's been a lot going on there. Um, we have a hope and aspiration also to dovetail into that sector, but we haven't as yet, so we're hoping to, in the next couple of years, to start focusing on that sector as well. But the petroleum sector um, has been managed by Nigeria for a while. It's the mainstay of the Nigerian economy. We have the government relying on it for 80% of its revenues. Um, so essentially, that's where Nigeria's economy, um, whether it grows or not, a lot depends on the petroleum sector. So we thought, if we get that sector right, we can apply those same principles into other sectors as well and replicate the success that the petroleum sector eventually sees. <coughs> the problems that Nigeria has, the challenges, are known to a lot of people. But what our, ch our research has found, um, specifically in looking at the Natural Resource Charter, which the NNRC uses to assess Nigeria's, um, econ Nigeria's management of natural resources against global best practices, we found that there are two specific areas where Nigeria continues to perform badly in. One, it's in its national oil company, NNPC. As we all know, there's a lot um, in that space and a lot of negative sort of indicators in terms of the corporate governance structures, in terms of how it manages um, its operations, whether or not it's focusing specifically on regula being a regulatory body or whether it's trying to be um, commercial. So there's a lot of confusion around those aspects of things as well. And another area, which will not surprise you to know, is around how it transfers benefits of resource extraction to the people of Naya Delta, so the host communities, where these extractive activities take place. So one of our core focus areas and one of the things we try to do is try to highlight these issues and then we advocate with the government, um, encouraging stakeholders as well, letting them know what the problems are um, and then how to advocate, what to ask for, because it's also very important for stakeholders to know what questions to ask and our framework provides that sort of specific guide as to what questions we should ask to take Nigeria from where it is now to a different sort of space. Um, so what we've been doing again is also encouraging reforms around strategy, around the legal framework. So the petroleum industry bill, for instance, which has been on for past 18 years um, and continu continues to stall while countries like Mozambique, Ghana and our other competitors move forward and pass theirs and become a bit more competitive than Nigeria. The PIB has forestalled for a long time. Um, when people start keep hearing about the PIB, it becomes this thing that people don't necessarily understand. So just to break it down, there are different components of the PIB, things that we expect to, be, to happen. So for governance, we expect to have a stronger regulator. Um, look at what the NCC, for instance, has done for the telecoms industry. We expect similar liberalization to happen if the PI, PIB is passed. We expect the host community issues also to be addressed to make sure that they can feel the, bene the benefits. Um, at the moment, they feel a lot of the negative effects, um, degradation, um, oil pollution, air pollution, etc. cetera, um, but not enough of the benefits, not enough development is happening in that region. Um, we want to have, we, the minister has rolled out certain ambitions for Nigeria generally. Um, want to create more jobs. How do we do that? It's by liberalizing the sector, um, the downstream sector as well, um, ensuring that we have um, less gas flaring, for instance, increasing the penalties around that area, um, ensuring that we have a functioning oil spill agency, which is NOSDRA. The NOSDRA Amendment Act also, um, during the 8th Assembly, was also not assented to by the president. So we expect that to also be addressed now. Um, we expect the commercialization of the gas flaring to also start off, to kick off and com be completed. So there are a lot of initiatives that we hope that will happen. And as you've said, having someone at the helm who comes from that region, we also expect him to have those issues to be made priority as well. See, studies have shown that Nigerians, Nigerians also already pay um, disproportionately. So in certain regions, they pay above the 145 anyway. So why not liberalize and make it equal for everyone? Because it doesn't reflect, what we have now doesn't reflect the true nature of things. 
and just allowing the market to be free flowing will also ensure that we have um, more businesses, more players in the sector, and eventually it will all sort of be more competitive and balance out. They certainly are indicating that they want to move in that direction of transparency and accountability. Um, it's relatively new, so we would have to watch the space to see what eventually happens. Um, but one of the things that I would note is that we have different, say, different change in management, for instance, and they come in with their own different agendas, which is good, but something like the PIB would ensure that that's entrenched and it's not motivated by any one person or any one team, but then becomes practice. So practice in NNPC sometimes has been to be both regulator and also operates commercially, but then the act as a regulator interferes with its commercial role, which is essentially is what it's supposed to focus on. Um, so having that entrenched in the PIB and passing that then makes it very clear. So whatever management is in NNPC, we know what they're supposed to be um, abiding by, what their goals are supposed to be, what their vision is supposed to be, and how they're supposed to move forward for the benefit of Nigerians. We've had some positive responses um, from not just say IOCs, I would say just generally the stakeholders in general, the industry, um, civil society, the public, and the, our goals, I would say, are for the benefit of Nigerians. So there's really no reason not to support what we're trying to do.